Hello everyone, today is Wednesday, July 22nd, the day after I day. Before we go any further, I do have to say the disclaimer, anything in this presentation is for educational purposes only and is not advice or a recommendation to buy or sell anything. Alright, so yesterday we looked at Apple, we talked about a straddle before the earnings report. So let's first start with the chart real quick, we can see what Apple did. Apple gapped up from yesterday's close, it traded as high as 157, it ended up finishing actually near the lows of the day huge volume that tells you there was a lot of buyers and sellers you could actually say the sellers won out even though the stock finished up because it did finish lower than where it opened but there were numerous upgrades ahead of the report a lot of positive commentary after the report they just knocked the cover off the ball it just goes to show that even though the consumer is constrained when it comes to something i cool the consumer i wants it it's pretty amazing so let's quick take a peek at the chart from yesterday that we looked at. The question was to straddle or not to straddle. And you can see that the options yesterday with the stock about 150.40, we could have uh, paid 685 for the call, 640 for the put. So if we take that out today, you can see how the call has appreciated in value, but the put has dramatically decreased in value because now the unknown is known. So yesterday, the August 150 straddle would have cost about $13.25. Today, it's worth eleven forty-seven. So even though the stock moved about $5 higher, the trade is still down $1.78, or about 13.4%. You can see what implied volatility crush does after the unknown, which is the earnings report, becomes known. Now it's, everybody can see the earnings report. They know which direction the stock is likely to move. So there you have it. Now over the next couple days, if the stock does not move, faded decay will definitely erode the value of these options. So if you're doing this trade on paper and, you're, and you were following it, you might want to wait a couple days possibly and then think about closing it. But uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I wasn't a big fan of it because the cost of the trade really required Apple to move a huge amount. And that may not happen. It could, but it certainly didn't happen the day after. So I had mentioned I would rather wait for the report and then go ahead and play the direction of the breakout up or down. So before we go and we get into the uh, strategy, let's just go back to the chart. And you can see I have this blue triangle or triangle, blue rectangle drawn in here. The stock gapped up, it might come down and test the five day EMA. And if the market pulls back itself and some profit taking does occur in Apple, the stock may end up tracing, retracing all the way back down to the 20 day, which is where this gap is. And there's also some other resistance here. You could even, you could even move this over into this area too. But really 145 should be tough support because over time, the next couple days, the 20 day moving average is going to rise and it'll be at 146 and 147. So I think the 20 day is gonna be a good, good support level. With that in mind, knowing that, hey, the market is overbought, Apple just gapped up, it's, it could be considered overbought. Instead of chasing the stock right away, we could consider entering a bull put. A bull put's a short put at a higher strike than our long put. Bull puts optimize bullish trends, stagnant trends, and even slightly bearish trends, which we just talked about. In order for this trade to work and hit its profit target, the stock needs to finish equal to or above $145 upon expiration. Well, that is $11 from where the stock is trading right now. So we can make money even if the stock drops $11. So let's just take a quick peek at it. Again, we sell to open the 145. We buy to open the 140 long put. Total net credit, 60 cents a share. Total risk, 440. So the target exit point allow both options to expire worthless, which would result in 13.6% in about 30 days. That's not bad. Imagine doing that once a month, take that number times 12. A contingency exit plan could be allowed a short put to be assigned and then convert to a collar trade. And at markettamer.com, we show you how to take these multi-directional strategies. And in this case, the bull put, if it goes against us, we'll own some shares and we'll turn it into a profitable trade. So if you'd like more information on that, please visit us at markettamer.com. We wish you a fantastic day and a great week ahead. We'll see you later.